Oh hey, how's it going? Welcome to my U-Haul tiny house. Today I think we need to talk a little bit about security. There's no question that living out of a U-Haul has a lot of increased risks associated with it. I mean, the U-Haul is a vehicle and a house in one. So if somebody steals it, you're not only losing your vehicle, you're losing a house. And you want to have that peace of mind when you're living somewhere that no one's going to break in or disturb you while you're trying to live. One of the ways we do that, you may have already seen it in my videos, is with a security camera system. Now, as this truck stands right now, it is currently equipped with seven cameras. That's right, seven. These aren't all strictly for stationary security. I want to break down security into two different groups here. We're talking about stationary security and moving security and safety. So I do have some cameras dedicated to traveling safety and security that give me a visibility to my blind spots on the left and right and behind me for parking but i've also got four dedicated cameras to stationary security as well hooked up to a dvr system that allows me to record everything that's happening outside the truck so today i'm going to show you my setup and we're going to install two new cameras bringing us to a grand total of nine cameras in the truck is it a world record but you guys know me i love high tech this is kind of a cutting edge van and the security is no exception to that. With that said, let's get started. This is my electrical cabinet. In here we've got batteries, we've got inverter, solar charge controller, breaker panels for 12 volt and 110, everything we need to run the brains of the machine here. Eventually all my other control panels, thermostats, interfaces, things like that will also be stored in here. Gauges for water and whatnot, so that everything is centrally accessible and also hidden away from general you know, use just to make it look a little bit nicer. But for now, until that happens, this is what we're dealing with. So like I said, I'm working a little bit on cable management here, but we're, we're talking about cameras here today, not cable management. So right here is my DVR digital video recorder for my security system. As you can see, it is very small. The cables take up more space than the DVR itself. I'll have a link in the description below for this particular model that I used. I gotta say, so far, I've been using this for about three months. I am pretty satisfied with it. Obviously, this is not where this is gonna be permanently. Like I said, I gotta create some kind of system where these types of devices will be stored. Maybe on the wall here, maybe on the door itself. What you are looking at here is number one, white cord is power it comes from 12 volt that I have hooked up to my my 12 volt breaker box right now this big chunk you got here is the video inputs for all my cameras you can see we've got a total of four inputs and I'm using all four one for the front cab side left side right and rear and those are all feeding out through this cable to the bottom of the truck these two are for my HDMI transmitter. This bad boy comes with an HDMI output which is great if you want to hardwire a TV or some kind of monitor somewhere however I wanted a little more flexibility. So what I did is I found a wireless HDMI transmitter that allows me to receive this HDMI signal from anywhere within probably like 50 meters. And the blue is the power for the HDMI transmitter. So there's a couple USB ports in the back of this for not only a mouse to control it, but also powering auxiliary devices. So the blue is powering my HDMI transmitter, which feeds a signal over here to my custom designed Raspberry Pi. And when I turn this tablet on, because it's got the other half of the HDMI receiver built into this little back compartment that I designed here, this screen that we're looking at now is basically telling us that the HDMI receiver is looking for the other HDMI receiver. So it'll automatically locate it and connect to it, and then we'll have that feed from my DVR. So I just restarted the HDMI receiver on that end, and you can see that it's picking up that signal now. The beep from the DVR means that it's turning on, detecting cameras. and our feed automatically loads. Currently troubleshooting an issue with my cabin camera. I think that one might be dead. Oh, no, we got a signal there for a second. Here's a rear view, side right and side left. You guys can see that with that wireless HDMI transmitter, I'll be able to move this around. If I want to watch my security footage from the kitchen, I can do that. If I want to move it up to my bed area, I can plug it in up there. Anywhere that I can plug in, which I've got, you know, 110 volt outlets everywhere, Realistically speaking, this is mostly for stealth camping. So that when I'm in here and the patio is up, and my door is closed back there, I don't have any windows in here to give me any kind of visibility. So this is the only way I can watch and monitor the outside world. Right now I have to plug this into a wall, but I do have plans to make this completely wireless in the future by adding a battery pack to the back side of this. Now, of course, I'll have some links in the description below if you guys want to get your own version of this. This is not a tablet. 
This is a Raspberry Pi with a touch screen. Well, you might be asking, what, where's the Pi part of that come in? Now, for those of you who don't know, Raspberry Pi is just a small microcomputer which sits in the back here. The Raspberry Pi part doesn't actually play into the security function of this at all. The screen for the Raspberry Pi has an alternate HDMI input that allows me to view the HDMI input from that DVR wirelessly. However, if I wanted to, I can simply change the input on my tablet. So you can think of this screen as kind of a, a TV with multiple inputs. I can switch the input over to my Raspberry Pi, which gives me a fully functional touchscreen laptop or desktop computer. It's pretty powerful. It's enough to stream YouTube, things like that. Do some basic web browsing, shopping, looking at maps. When I want to switch back to my security footage, it's a couple clicks on the back of the tablet here to go right back to my security footage. Well, this particular model that I chose does have an SD card slot and a USB slot for a dedicated hard drive, which means that you can be recording footage 24 seven if you want to. For me, this DVR system is designed to work essentially as Windows because I do not have Windows in here when I'm in stealth mode. So my primary function is simply to gain visibility in terms of what's happening outside the truck while I'm living in it. You may have different considerations if you want to record while you're away from your truck, things like that, and the DVR option might be good for you. You guys might be asking, why do you have it set up through a wireless HDMI receiver when you could just send it up to the cloud and view it wirelessly that way? That is the setup that you'll see in most other vans. When you see them carrying around a very thin tablet that they're viewing their, viewing their security footage on, they're relying on a cloud-based system that will basically give their cameras a live feed through the internet into whatever kind of device that you want to view that on, be it a tablet or a phone, whatever. The problem with that is that you're not always going to have reliable internet. And I don't want to be reliant on the internet for me to see what's going on outside my truck. Now my DVR does have a networking function which I will be using once I install a permanent internet connection in here. But it's only hardwired so I have to have some kind of a router or ethernet cable to plug it in too. So eventually I will have the capability to monitor this from the cloud when I do have access. But I have the flexibility to view it even without that. And that's key. So keep that in mind when you're watching other van videos and they have fancy security camera footage. If they're viewing it from a tablet, they means that they are using Wi-Fi and if they're using Wi-Fi that means it's reliant on a cloud-based connection and having good internet signal. So that is a walkthrough of my stationary living camera security system. Let's talk a little bit about my driving security system. First thing you guys should notice when you get in one of these trucks is that you have no visibility behind you at all. I can rely on my mirrors as I'm driving to give me an idea of who's next to my truck, but still that leaves blind spots. And just like 18 wheelers, if you're behind me, I can't see you at all. And the way that I solved that problem is through a driving monitor hooked up to a set of three cameras, giving me visibility on both left and the right, and also behind me. And you guys have probably seen this in some of my stealth camping videos already, but as I'm driving, it just gives me great visibility for left and right. I can get ideas, especially for freeways when people are just zipping around next to you. It's a really great way to maintain visibility and just situational awareness when you're on the road. However, and this might sound silly, but I do not have enough cameras in here to fulfill all of my needs seven cameras three for the driving four for the box it's just not enough there is one key cr critical functionality that we're missing in this truck on top of that the rear view camera that i currently have for driving is mounted on the top of the box pointing down so that i can see where my bumper is for backing up it's primarily a parking camera not so much a driving camera so i can't see the cars behind me i can only see straight down so that when i go to park I can get a great visibility on my bumper and where that is. So we need to gain visibility on cars behind us while we're driving, number one. Number two, we need a dash cam, primarily for insurance purposes, for vehicle collisions, things like that, but also for things like security while I'm not in the truck. That's right, parking camera monitoring. So this is what my view looks like as I'm driving down the road currently. I've got my camera here, so I can easily see both the left and the right side, plus the rear view camera right now this is just looking at the roof hatch because my patio is open it'd be nice to add kind of a rear view mirror functionality for when i am driving and i just want to get visibility on what's going on behind me to accomplish this i'll be installing a red tiger f7 np 4k dash cam with the rear camera i opted for the additional hard wiring power kit so this runs while i'm parked off of my battery to give me that parking security feature Thankfully, the user manual provided by Red Tiger is very easy to use with great color pictures and perfect English, which makes the installation of this already simple unit that much easier. 
Step one is to simply attach the dash cam with the suction mount unit to the windshield. Then we can go ahead and attach our rear camera wire and our permanent power supply wire. I want these hidden from view, so I'm gonna route that through the plastic lining of the cab itself. And luckily there's already enough space up here for me to kind of tuck these cables in. Realistically speaking, I didn't actually have to remove this handle. I could have just routed the cables up through the top of the plastic and down through the side of the door. I should note at this point that the install process for all of my cameras was essentially the same as what you're seeing here. Choose your install location, place the camera there, and then run the cables back to the central console. Generally speaking, each camera has a signal cable and a power cable. In this case, it was two in one, which made it really easy. But if you are going to install cameras in your truck, you want to start thinking about that as early as possible in the build process, because the cables that are being run from different locations in the truck need to be hidden, at least if you want it to look nice. And that has to be taken into consideration before things like walls and framing go in. I did have to get the extension cord for the camera unit, and that gives me 33 feet of cable to use that I'm routing through the engine compartment of the truck since it's an easy opening from my dash area. Before I run this cable all the way through the back of the truck, I'm going to go ahead and attach some plastic sheathing just to protect it from the elements. From here, it's simply a matter of getting underneath the truck and routing this through all the nooks and crannies along the frame itself. Once you get down there, you'll see that there's already a lot of other cables routed in a similar fashion. So I kind of just mimicked the same installation pattern of those with occasional zip ties, fastening it to the frame. Once my cable was run, I simply attached my rear camera with the included adhesive and drilled a small hole for the cable to go through the frame of the truck. I filled that hole with some silicone to prevent that cable from wiggling around and getting frayed over time and simply connected the cable to the camera. All we need to do for our hard wiring kit is attach two fuses into our dashboard fuse box. And before you know it, we're up and running with power and visibility from our rear view camera. Next, I'm going to go ahead and install the Red Tiger app for managing this camera from my phone. The app allows you to view the feeds, change settings, and also manage files. You can see here that when I switch the view from my phone, it also switches the view on the camera itself. Taking it for a test run, I realized that my sunblocker is in the way, so it's a quick and easy adjustment to move the camera since it is attached with just a simple suction mount. Once I started driving, I immediately had a sense of increased awareness due to the fact that I had a nice crisp image of what was going on behind me. This definitely made driving a little bit more comfortable. After I transferred some files to my computer for viewing, I noticed that they were not only very large, but also a great picture, crisp, clear, and similar to what I would generally see in something like my GoPro camera. The included GPS features allow me to not only track speed, but also location. You'll see that there are coordinates attached to the video file there. there. I had to do zero extra setup to get that working properly, which was pretty awesome. And if you guys really want to, you can plug in those coordinates and see where I was driving on this day. There's no doubt that this Red Tiger camera fulfills my needs for a dash cam and a rear view mirror. And I gotta say, between the ease of installation and the quality of the end product, I am quite surprised and more than happy to recommend the Red Tiger camera series to you guys. Thanks to Red Tiger for partnering with me on this video and supplying me with a quality product. If you guys want to get your own camera and help out the channel, you can use coupon code BARBARIAN at checkout to get 10% off your Red Tiger camera. Link in the description. And as always, if you have any questions that I did not answer in this video, go to technobarbarian.locals.com. That's my private community. More than happy to answer any questions and have discussions with you guys there.